First verse of the Quran in uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Now there are many lectures online, audio, texts that you can read where you will learn the in-depth meanings of Al-Fatiha and of this verse. But the main purpose of this video, and to keep it short, I won't be delving into the deep, deep meanings. Rather, we will only be looking at the meanings that we can derive by using the grammar and knowledge of the Arabic language. So first things first, when I see a sentence, based on what we've learned, the first thing I would want to do is find out which kind of sentence it is. And this particular sentence is a jumla ismiya, right? And a jumla ismiya, for those of you who don't remember, is a nominal sentence. And we learned that in video number four, okay? And how do I know it's a nominal sentence? Because the first word is an ism. This first word, alhamdu, is an ism. How do I know that? Because an alif lam can only come on isms. So if you didn't know that, then you need to take note of that because alif lams, they only come on isms. And so once I've found out it's a jumla ismiya, I go back to my knowledge of Arabic grammar and I know that a jumla ismiya consists of a mubtada and a khabar. And a mubtada is called a mubtada because it comes from the, the, the root bada'a. And that means to start, to begin. Okay, so this mubtada is this first word because it begins the sentence. And then this entire segment here after it is our khabar. So now I know that the meaning of this sentence will be alhamd, whatever alhamd means, is, because remember is is hidden, is whatever this means. Okay, I have alhamd as the subject of my sentence. And I'm going to inform you, I'm going to give you a khabar about it through this segment of the sentence. And we'll understand once we get in, get into detail. So, we have again, alhamd. The alif lam, the way we've learned it, it means the, correct? But here I've translated it as all. That is because alif lam can also mean enveloping all types of whatever the word is. So here, because we have alhamd, based on context, we can understand that this alif lam actually does not mean the, but it means this. That all types of praise belong to Allah, Lord of the worlds. How did I get that from the context? Well, if I said the praise, if I said the praise, it would mean that I had already referred to it that it had come up before, that this was a praise that I was already talking about. But in this case, this is the first verse. It wouldn't be referring to anything, and so it would not make sense. If I said the praise belongs to Allah, which praise? What is the phrase, the praise that you're talking about? And so through context, and also through what the scholars of explanation of the Quran have told us, we know that this alif lam takes this meaning right here. And I wrote down here that Alhamd is Mubtada, and, and we, we already talked about this. Next, we have Lillahi. Lillahi. Now, how do I know to read this Lillahi? Well, the original word is spelt like this, Allah. Now, what I could do, if I wanted to add a Lam, I'd, I'd write it like this. But you don't need to do that. Why? Because there's already a Lam here. And this Lam is silent in the actual word. This lamb is a silent lamb here. It has nothing on top of it. And so instead of adding another lamb, just for the sake of brevity, we don't need any of that. We just remove the alif and we, we make use of this lamb by adding a kasra underneath. And that's how we get lillahi. And obviously this lamb, as we discussed in lesson number eight, li means for or belonging to. And so all praise belongs to Allah, to God. And we've given Allah a kasra because of this lamb. And so here again we have Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Now one thing you'll notice about Rabb is that it has a kasra. And what does that tell us about Rabb? It tells us that Rabb is an adjective. Of what? Of the word that comes before it, Allah. Why? Because an adjective holds the same 
case ending as the object it describes. So because Rub or Lord in English is describing Allah, it carries the same case ending. So there's a kasra here and a kasra here. And we'll learn more about this in uh, the next video, video number nine. And finally, our last word is Al-Alamina. So Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamina. And for those of you that watched the last video, you may realize that Rabb and Al-Alamina have a relationship. So Rabb is Mudaf and Al-Alamin is Mudaf Ilay. So they have a relationship of Al-Idafa. And what that means is that Rabb cannot take an Alif Lam and Al-Alamin takes an Alif Lam and on top of that it takes a Kasra. So now Rabb has a Kasra because of Allah and Al-Alamin has a Kasra because it's the Mudaf Ilay of Rabb. And so when we translate it, we know that the translation has to be Lord of, of is hidden, although I've written it here, if you remember the last video, of does not actually have a presence in an Arabic sentence, and you just assume it based on the idafa structure. So of is hidden in the middle there. So we say, Rub Lord of Al-Alameen, the worlds. And how do we know that? Because we realize that this is a mudaf mudaf ilayk structure based on the way it looks and context. Now, you might ask, well, why doesn't Al-Alameen have a kasra? Why does it have a fatha? Well, that's because Al-Alameen is a plural. So alam is the singular form. And then alamun is the plural form. Now, if you want to give alamun a kasra or fatha, you actually change it to alameen. That's why many of you will have heard muslimun and you'll have heard muslimin. Because the only difference is that alameen is the kasra or fatha form of alamun, and that's the only difference. And so because alamun is always going to have this fatha there, and we cannot change it, what we do is we change this wow, and this wow becomes a ya, and it looks like this, whenever we want to give it a fatha or a kasra. And we'll get into this when we talk about case endings, so 